Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. My name is Steven and this is the Storytime channel. We've got some I don't work here lady stories and our first story of the day is by Jax Leo. Help a bank worker, now deal with the client. My grandma usually does a lot of stuff in the bank. She's pretty well known there. There's this one worker she usually goes to who helps her. Due to COVID, she wasn't able to go there in person. So she asked me to help her get a receipt she needed for the bank to approve a credit. She gave my phone number to the worker and told me to send him through WhatsApp the receipt once I had downloaded it. Note, to get access to it, you need very personal information like bank accounts, passwords, and everything. But since she's my grandma, I had no problem with her entrusting that information to me, so I did as she asked and thought it would be the end of it. A few weeks after that, the same bank worker called out of nowhere. I answered thinking he needed something for my grandma again. The guy told me he needed the same receipt I had given him a few weeks prior but for a different client of his, a completely unknown person. He told me that he had spoken with my grandma and that she said I agreed to help him. She never called me to ask. So I started explaining him the steps he should follow to get it on his own, but no. He insisted and started spewing out the personal data of the client as if it was nothing serious. At that point, I just wanted to be done with it and did as he told me just so I could hang up the call. Thought that'd be the end of it again. Once more, I was wrong. So this time around, the person that called me was the client from the last time around. The bank worker gave him my number and told him I could help him if something happened. He started telling me how he accidentally had locked his bank account and needed me to help him recover it. I started explaining to him that I really couldn't help him that he should be calling the bank worker to help him, and then the guy started getting annoyed and talking in a very loud tone, as entitled as he could get, telling me how I was a bad bank worker, and that he'd get me fired for refusing to help him, and I was like, sir, I don't work in the bank, I helped the guy get a receipt, and now look where that's got me. The guy apologized in an annoyed tone and hung up, and that's about everything of that, for now at least. Whoever the actual bank worker is, if this is a legit story, is definitely committing some kind of very, very big violation. If you got referred to as the guy to somehow help recover bank accounts for no reason, even though you obviously don't work there at all, would you just ghost the conversation or would you try and explain it? Let me know your preferred route in the comments down below. Because I feel like if I was in this situation where some guy on WhatsApp's like, I'm being told you can help me recover my bank account. I might just ignore him. It's not my responsibility. Our next story is by Dragon Crystal. Karen traps herself in changing room after getting mad at me. This happened a long time ago before this pandemic started. My mom and I were at Walmart shopping for stuff. Possibly some grocery too. My mom likes a shirt and wants to go try it on, so we head to the changing room. I'm waiting for her to try on the shirt and just looking at my phone while keeping an eye on our cart. Mom says, hey OP, can you get a larger size? This one's a bit tight. So I get up and go find a bigger size for her. After I find it and hand it to my mom, I go back to where I was sitting when I hear, excuse me. I look up and I see Karen standing in a different changing room holding up a shirt or some kind of clothing. Here, give me a different size. It's too small for me. I say, I'm sorry, but I don't work here. Well, you helped the other woman. Why wouldn't you help me? I was dressed in all black, not the Walmart uniform. I helped her because she's my mom and I don't have to help you if I don't feel like it. Besides, I don't even know where you got that from. I got this from over there. Spots to a random direction. It's not that hard to find. It's right in the opening, so be nice and go get it for me now. Sorry, but I was told to watch the cart and stay here in case something happens to our stuff. But you can change back and get it yourself. Karen angrily huffs and slams the door shut hard. She might have slammed it too hard, because I noticed the door to my mom's changing room shake a bit. A few minutes later, my mom comes out, wondering what happened and what that yelling was about. I explain everything to her, and we walk away from the changing room. She puts the shirt back because she couldn't find one that fits her. But as we were leaving, I recall hearing a rattling behind us, so I stopped, looking around, and even waited a bit for the rattling to start again. Mom noticed I stopped. Is something wrong? Me still looking around, I thought I hear some rattling. Mom says maybe it was the card wheel since a lot of these wheels tend to rattle loudly and get squeaky after a while. Let's hurry, we've been here much longer than we should have and your dad might get mad. So we just walk away where I eventually spot an actual employee and let her know about Karen needing help in the changing room. Which she responded thanks I'll head over and see what she needs. 
My mom and I head over to the grocery section, grab a few items before heading to the checkout area. While we're waiting in line, we hear over the PA system, um, can we get maintenance over to the changing room? We seem to have a bit of a problem over here. We start laughing over the call. We can only assume what the problem could be since we haven't seen Karen leave the changing room. Cashier rings up our stuff and we head home for the evening not wanting to hear what happened, since Karen might accuse me of not helping her and possibly claim that I trapped her in the changing room. Then again, that rattling I heard when we were leaving the area could have been Karen trying to open the door. But since my mom was in a hurry, we saved ourselves from Karen's full wrath. I think the only thing that surprises me is Karen went from very talkative about the clothing and helping her out with changing to saying nothing when the door was broken. Though I know when people are in stressful situations, some can tend to freeze up and they can't get any words out, so maybe the Karen was panicking, I don't know. This next story is by Pint Size. Sorry I don't know where a specific item is. Go ahead, call the manager. Earlier this year, I was in my local grocery store. I had just got off work, so I was wearing a white dress shirt, dress pants, and a tie. Here I am, minding my own business, looking for taco mix, when a woman who was about 30 comes up to me. The woman asks me what aisle pancake mix is in, so I told her, I think it's in aisle 5. Lady walks away, no thank you, nothing. About 5 minutes later, I am getting something from the top shelf for my wife, who is standing next to me, when the lady comes up to me again, looking annoyed. This time she goes, It wasn't in aisle 5, I went down there and it wasn't there, I ended up finding it in aisle 6. I responded, Sorry? Meanwhile, my wife is looking super confused. The woman goes on to ask if there was a washroom she could use. I tell her, Sorry, I don't think the bathroom is for public use, but... She interrupts me. I have to use the washroom, this is ridiculous. You won't even let paying customers use the washroom? I demand to speak to your manager immediately. At this point, I am now annoyed. My response, sure, but honestly, I don't think she'll care what you have to say about the store's washroom policy. By this time, the woman's husband and the store manager have walked up. Lady raises her voice. You crap, I demand to speak to the manager now. Her husband, looking horrified, quickly interjects. Honey, he doesn't work here. I look her dead in the eye. Yeah, I totally don't work here. I was trying to be helpful. Do you still want me to call my manager? Her husband answered, No, it is fine, sorry. As I am walking away, I hear the lady say to the store manager, He has a serious attitude problem. You're just going to let him talk to customers like that? To which he responded, Sorry ma'am, but he's not an employee. He does not work here. He's another shopper. As we are walking to the checkout lane, my wife goes, Why do people always think you work in stores when we go shopping? The next day at work, for good measure, I informed my manager that I had a customer complaint about my attitude and not knowing what aisle pancake mixes in at the grocery store. She laughed. These kinds of stories are exactly why I think if you walk up to somebody expecting to get help in a grocery store or really any kind of place, and they don't have like a blatantly obvious uniform or a name tag for the store, you should preface this with, excuse me, do you work here? You'll know exactly, and you won't have to do this back and forth, let me speak to your manager. But if that world existed, Karen's wouldn't exist, and there probably wouldn't be a whole bunch of stories to read from, so it's a little bit of a trade-off. This next story is by Eternally Sunny D. Do you know where the instant potatoes are? This is actually a feel good one for a bit of a flavor change. I do love the wild rager ones, but this one happened to me this week whilst grocery shopping and I thought I'd share. For context, I was in my local Wegmans supermarket, best grocery stores ever, and the uniform is khakis in some bread colored polo with logos and name tags. I'm wearing light blue shorts, an electric blue shirt, and a fanny pack across my chest kinda didn't look like an employee at all. Anywho, more context. I'm using their in-store scan app for faster checkout and it makes my phone bleep loudly. So like, I could understand navigating through mask life by sound, I might resemble an employee or at least Instacart shopper. I'm in the Asian cuisine aisle looking for rice. Woman, older, posted note in hand, no smartphone to be seen. Hey, excuse me, I'm in here shopping for a friend and she wants instant potatoes and I've never bought them and have no idea where to look for them. Can you help me figure out where they are? Me, already on my phone in their lookup app looking for the specific rice my fiancé wanted. Um, I know they're nearby. Hang on, let me check. Search, find. Yeah, they're over in aisle 21B, just a couple over from here. 
As I said this, I turned and she saw the logo on my shirt that's clearly 30-something, never grew up, and decidedly not employee. She said, oh dear, I'm so sorry, I thought you worked here. You're so kind to help me anyway, even though you didn't have to. I say, yeah, well, I had my phone out and the app open anyway. Figured might as well save you trying to chase down an employee. Woman says, look at you getting some good karma in. Thanks and wanders off to go grab her friend, the Instant Potatoes. I like how OP at the bottom of this post had to put in a disclaimer for non-Americans as to what Instant Potatoes are. It doesn't surprise me that it would be a very American thing, but it's kind of humorous. And also, if I wasn't annoyed by having a bunch of different random store apps on my phone, they'd be pretty handy in my eyes because you can just pop it in and find exactly what aisle and where to go. It's especially good for the big stores like a Home Depot. This next story is by Trihistorical6125, I'm the owner, he is my son. Quick intro. This was a funny story that had happened to me a few years ago. My parents are one of the founders of a resort and is chairman of the board of directors. I have sat in a few of the meetings so everyone knows that I'm the boss's son. I got homeschooled so the majority of my friends are basically senior staffs and people on the board. Pretty sad, huh? I was on vacation with my fiance. Julia, and my sister, Emma. I, Julia, and Emma were staying at my dad's resort for a week or two because we were visiting my mother. As we entered the resort, I noticed the parking lot was packed. It was midsummer, duh. And saw a few cars roaming around looking for parking spots. My family has a few private parking spots, and I noticed that his car wasn't here, but my mother's car was. As I walked to the reception, most of the staff know who I am, one of the staff working saw me and walked over to greet me. There were quite a few people in line waiting to check in. Ma'am, mom, is currently in a meeting. Would you like me to bring your luggage to your room? I say, yeah, thanks. Julia kept a bag that has her swim clothes in. Sometime later, after a bit of swimming, we went to the restaurant to eat lunch. I had put on a blue shirt and was still in my grey swim trunks. The clothing looked similar to the uniform that the waiters were wearing. They were almost identical except the only difference was that it didn't have the word staff on it. This will come in handy later. While we were chatting in the restaurant, I heard some lady say, hey you, rather rudely from somewhere behind me. I first thought it was just someone trying to get the attention of a waiter, so I continued chatting, eating with Julia and Emma. As I was chugging down some ginger ale after regretting trying my sister-in-law's food which she purposely did not tell me was pretty spicy, she knows I don't handle spicy food well and probably never will, can anyone else relate? Someone suddenly roughly grabbed my shoulder from behind and I almost choked on my soda, spitting it all over my sister. Straight up karma, I gotta say. Ew, gross, was Emma's response, while my fiancé stood straight up and was about to ask me if I was alright, but here comes, you know who, Karen interrupting my sweet fiancé. Babe, are you? Hey, I've been trying to get your attention for a while now, Karen yelled out. Me, being someone who doesn't get mad that easily, looked up and asked her politely, Do you need anything, ma'am? Why are you eating with the guests and not doing your stupid job? Karen said. I caught on pretty quickly and knew that she thought I was a staff from what I was wearing, but I was getting a little annoyed from how much she was yelling at me while she was a foot away from me. Ma'am, I don't work, I tried saying. Shut up, I am a VIP here, Karen continued yelling. I continued to talk calmly to Miss Loudmouth while raising my voice a little. Excuse me, I don't work here, slap. Don't you use that tone with me, brat. As she slapped me, her long nails cut into my cheek, leaving a long cut and started bleeding. My fiancé almost went pale seeing as blood started to drip off my face. My sister immediately started to call our mother to come. The manager was walking over when he heard Karen yelling, but then broke into a run and hurried over when he saw Karen slap me. Ma'am? Noah, you alright? Jack the manager had said. Jack was someone who has worked for the resort for a few years, so he was pretty casual with me. My fiancé had put a piece of napkin on my cheek to try to stop the bleeding. Are you the manager? I want this staff fired. He is unprofessional. I don't know why you hired an idiot. Karen pointed at me and spoke as if she was the owner. Ma'am, he doesn't work here, Jack started explaining. You're trying to cover him? I want you fired as well. I never knew someone's face could get as red as a tomato until that day. I saw my mother running over with two security guards and when she saw my fiancé holding a blood red napkin against my face and Karen yelling at me, I thought she was going to explode as she rushed over to me. 
My sister had informed our mother about what was happening and what Karen had done. My mother almost yelled, what on earth happened? Guards arrest her. What do you mean arrest me? Who are you to do that? Karen was struggling in the guards hands. I am the owner. You dare to slap my son? My God, the face Karen made when she heard those lines, I won't ever forget it. She was as white as snow while her eyes and mouth were wide open. After she was taken away, some of the other customers started clapping. My mother ran up to me to see my face. She spoiled me when I was younger and was always defensive of me as if she was a mother protecting her cub. She was the one who had me do homeschooling after she was told I was getting bullied in primary and middle school. After we had taken care of the cut on my face, which I ended up needing stitches for, no worries, the scar faded, my mother told me that Karen had been charged with second degree assault and will be spending the following month in jail. No matter which way you frame it, Karen assaulted OP, and them being the son of a resort owner? You know Karen was on a fast pass to getting screwed over quickly. A month in jail is the result. This next story is by Gore Wraith. I don't work here, but show some respect to those that do. This is a friend's story. He is the tech support for many small businesses. One of his clients is a sushi restaurant. He is a white man but married into a Spanish-speaking family and has immersed himself in the language. While working to update the point of sale system for them during business hours, he had a few interactions with customers assuming he worked for the restaurant despite wearing a logoed polo with his own business name that looked completely different from the dress code for the restaurant. Most of these interactions were pleasant. One was not. Two men came in speaking Spanish to one another. Not typical, but not unusual. My friend happens to be fluent in Central American Spanish. These two men were making fun of the accents of the staff and making lewd comments about the women working there. Not expecting anyone would understand them, they spoke very freely. They also didn't want to work with the racial slur woman at the register because she probably wouldn't understand them anyway. Seeing my friend, they asked in English if he could take their order. He responded to them in Spanish that, I don't work here, but show some respect to those that do. Realizing that everything they had said had been understood, they both became very embarrassed and left the restaurant. I've said it in the past and I'll say it again, these are like my absolute favorite kinds of stories. The one where somebody walks in thinking nobody can understand them and they speak all confidently and lay all their cards out on the table. Just to get it thrown right back into their face that everything they had said and everything that they had done was completely and blatantly understood. Love these kinds of stories. And our final story of the day is by Frinska5, I am not a dog sitter. This happened a year ago and it is not the first time. I think I have an I work here face. I was eating french fries and sausages outside a store. I was waiting for my mother and sister outside a women's clothes store. I sat in the shade, relaxed and put on my noise cancelling headphones and listened to my audiobook. A woman with a German Shepherd puppy approached me and asked me if I could watch her puppy while she bought something at the pharmacy that was behind me. I told her yes, and a couple minutes later, she came back and left with her puppy. A moment later, an elderly woman who was carrying a large adult pit bull stood next to my seat while talking on her phone. I was full into the history of Quoth, so I didn't notice anything besides the dog greedily watching my food, so I gave him some pieces of sausage. After a while, I realized that the woman had disappeared. I checked the dog's collar and saw that her name was Choclio, something like a small corn in Spanish. I stayed next to Choclio, petting it since it was one of those kinds of huge dogs that only demanded affection. A moment later, my mother left the store. I told her that a woman had left him next to me. The dog almost knocked her down because he gave her a headbutt demanding to get petted. A moment later, the old woman came out of a store and began to thank me for taking care of her baby and how grateful she was that the store had people to take care of the dogs. Because she was on a hurry and couldn't let her poor baby alone. It was at that moment that I realized that the woman thought I was a worker in charge of keeping an eye on customers' dogs. When I explained the misunderstanding, the woman turned pale with terror and began to thank me in apologizing. She was horrified that because of her carelessness, someone could have kidnapped her poor baby and used it for dog fights. My family loves animals, so we understand her fear. My mother and the old woman stayed talking for a while about their furry babies until my sister came back and we said goodbye. 
It's not a typical I don't work here lady story, but remembering the worried face of this old woman towards her enormous 40 kilogram furry baby always gives me a smile. Even more because pit bulls tend to be taken as a dangerous breed, but for this lady, he was just her baby. Pit bulls definitely get a bad rap. You hear it all the time, but it's always about how you raise it and how you take care of it. If you raise them well and you give them enough exercise, they're not demonous dogs of terror. They're literally like the most loving, cuddly animals you could have. They're fantastic dogs. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. So if you have a favorite story of the day, let me know which one and why in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe if you haven't and turn on notifications so you'll never miss an upcoming video from the Storytime channel. Every little thing that you do helps the channel grow that much more. So no matter what you did, thank you for supporting me right here on the Storytime channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all next time right here.